Welcome to Tino's Time Wrestling. And on this episode, I'm going to give you a post-show analysis of everything that went down last night at WrestleMania Backlash. And let's not waste any time, and let's get right into the action. The first match on the card that happened, it was Sheamus, and he issued an open challenge, and it was on the kickoff show. If you didn't watch the kickoff show, then you missed this match. And the person that answered Sheamus' open challenge, if you listen to my pre-show for WrestleMania Backlash, I talked about him it was pretty rick pretty ricky ricochet welcome back i'm so happy he's back on tv we haven't seen him in a minute he's kind of been here he's been on and off and you know but i was happy he got the opportunity and you know this match was actually pretty good for being on the kickoff show you know i'm not mad i really hope that ricochet does get the opportunity to continue this rivalry with sheamus even though in the end of the match and it was a really good match sheamus did end up picking up the win after kneeing ricochet i really thought he was going to get him from the broad kick but he did not but Sheamus did pick up the victory, but it was a really good match. And after the match, Ricochet thought while Sheamus was sitting there celebrating and he was like clothing and everything, Ricochet came up behind him. He took off his hat. He took off his robe and he beat the crap out of Sheamus. And then Sheamus was laying outside by the ring and pretty Rick, Ricochet put on the hat and put on the robe and was doing the dab and he was feeling good. And you know, this match wasn't bad. I'm going to give it a three out of five, you know, for being on the kickoff show it wasn't bad and I really hope that we get to see Ricochet versus Sheamus continue in the future because I would love to see Ricochet versus Sheamus and let's see him have a decent rivalry they need to do something with the United States Championship and Sheamus needs to do something because hopefully he wasn't just giving it to sit on the sidelines so hopefully from this going forward we see Ricochet versus Sheamus and I'm all about it but now let's get to everything that happened on the main card of Wrestlemania backlash and you know everybody like I like I talked about you know everybody said they were worried about the pay-per-view and I was actually worried about it too but the pay-per-view was actually really good and all the matches really did live up to expectations and in my opinion we'll talk about a match in, in a little bit that everybody is really hating on but I'll get to that let's talk about the raw triple threat match for the women's championship it was charlotte flair versus oscar versus the champion rhea ripley and these three women put on an absolute show i'm gonna give this match a four out of five i love all three women you know i've talked about charlotte and it's not that i don't like her i just am so tired of seeing her i respect her she's a great wrestler i can't take back what she's done she's a flair Woo! and she just is all about it but you know i just you know in this match when flair did the moonsault i think that's her move she did the moonsault on to rhea ripley and asuka and she did it back at wrestlemania 32 and it's the same types of things you know and that's it's like an omg moment oh my god and i think that's just the moment that charlotte Flair likes to have but in the end of this triple threat match, Rhea Ripley hit the Riptide and she picked up the 1-2-3 to continuously being your Raw Women's Champion. And now for what's going to happen after, we'll get into that in the Raw preview and I'll let you know who I think Rhea Ripley is going to face next. But the next match on the main card, it was for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. It was the Dirty Dogs versus the, the Mysterio family. Rey Mysterio and Dominic. And earlier on in the show, the Dirty Dogs beat up Dominic. And they were like, you know what, Dominic? We don't want you in this match. We want to see if Rey could do a two-on-one. And they ended up pushing some type of, like, big thing on him. I don't know exactly what it was. It might have been, like, an entertainment center thing or some type of crate. Or I don't know what exactly it was. It looked like it was wrapped with, like, green paper. If anybody knows, put it in the comments and let me know. But anyway, Dominic got was underneath this thing. And Jamie, Jamie Noble and a bunch of referees came out and they were trying to get him up and then later on Dominic wanted to go into the match but Ray was like no 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 so I thought maybe could we get the tag team batch or tag team back with Batista and Rey Mysterio if you remember way back in the day Rey Mysterio and Batista were tag team champions and I don't know why but Army of the Dead they were building up Batista's movie and we kept seeing it and you know I was just saying it, it, it wasn't gonna happen but Ray went out there by himself and he ended up going on two on one for a little bit. And, you know, once Ray kind of kicked out a couple times, I thought maybe they were going to have Dominic 
like not come out i really thought maybe they were gonna have the match be really quick and everything but once Rey mysterio kicked out a couple times i had a feeling dominic was gonna come out and that's exactly what happened dominic ended up coming out he was limping to the ring he ended up coming out and doing his thing and he showed why and how much better he's been getting in the ring and it was officially a tag team match after the dirty dogs thought they got rid of dominic mysterio he came out off guns of blazing and he did his thing and you know it was just a really good Good match in my opinion and in the end Rey Mysterio he hit the 619 and then Dominic did the frog splash he did a tribute to Eddie Guerrero rest in peace Eddie we miss you every day Eddie Guerrero I got your little pop over there love my little pops Eddie rest in peace Dominic did the frog splash onto Robert Roode and he picked up the one two three and then your new Smackdown tag team champions the Mysterio family Ray and Dominic and you know I'm gonna give this match a five out of five just because it was a really good tag team match and that moment you know I've been watching Ray Mysterio if you don't remember that rivalry that Ray and Eddie Guerrero had where they were fighting over the custody of Dominic and now Dominic's a tag team champion that is something I never thought I'd see I feel really old after saying that because I still remember watching that match at SummerSlam with Eddie and Ray and I was so happy that Ray was able to keep custody of Dominic but them having this moment as father and son it was phenomenal and I have a really good friend that's a Ray Mysterio fan and you know if it gets him back into watching wrestling I'm all about it because this moment is something that we'll never forget so congratulations to the Mysterio fan family I can't wait to see what goes on and how long they keep it it's funny because I do my other podcast TNT talk wrestling podcast go check that out on YouTube and I was talking to my boy at wrestling empire 12 YT and he was saying that he thought this was going to happen at SummerSlam but I was like no it's not going to happen they're going to do it now and like I said once Dominic came back and he was doing his thing and everything they won and again congratulations I just I was so happy about this so before I keep rambling on about this match let's get on to the next match that happened on the card and it was the Miz and Damian priest and you know i want to take a minute i'm going to take a minute breath and let's let's take a minute because ever since this match happened last night everybody has been hating on it they don't like it wwe ruined the they they brought wrestling back 30 years and aew thought the blood and guts match thought brought back to wrestling 30 years and everything like that and you know in my opinion i don't think people understand like i get like they were trying to build up the army of the dead for batista and you know it's better than bringing out a bunch of jobbers and i don't know i'm a big fan of the walking dead too so I really love zombies and I thought that was cool and that was something that you know if you play the old wrestling game they have zombies in the game and you know I just thought that was kind of cool to have a little bit of like a crossover with WWE and The Walking Dead and they even brought up the barbed wire bat Lucille Negan's barbed wire bat that he killed Glenn with and he's beat up everybody throughout the series of The Walking Dead you know it's just something like I enjoyed it and I'm gonna give it a four out of five because I enjoyed it and I understand like you know I didn't like that Damian Priest and The Miz beat up the zombies that was the one thing I didn't understand but I really thought it was interesting that Johnny Drip Drip came back out and he ended up getting like eaten and brought down to hell by the zombies and it's just something you know it was a def definitely an interesting match and it was definitely pretty good. Damian Priest did end up picking up the win when he hit the fin when he hit his finisher on the Miz, and it was just awesome. And you know, I'm happy Damian Priest get did pick up the win. But for what it was, people don't need to be hating on this so much. It was really good, and if you're a Walking Dead fan, I think that you'd enjoy it because it's zombies and it's wrestling, and it just it was something different. It's better than jobbers, like I just said, jobbers standing around doing nothing and mocking everybody. At least it was something different. I enjoyed it, so that's just my opinion but i'm definitely happy damian priest won this match but the one thing with this i hope that this rivalry does end and we could see damian priest go on to bigger and better things and i would not be mad about that at all so you could say what you want about this match but i really enjoyed it and it was better than what i thought so again congratulations to damian priest 
But now, let's talk about the SmackDown Women's Championship. It was the EST WWE Bianca Belair versus Ding Dong Hello Bailey. And you know, I love these women. I love Bailey and I love Bianca Belair. They I'm going to give this match a 3 out of 5 or no, no, you know what? I'm going to give this match definitely a better. It's going to be a 4.5 out of 5. I, this match was definitely better than the Lumberjack Zombie match. Even though I said I really enjoyed it, this match was definitely better. It was really good and it was so back and forth. They beat the hell out of each other. Bailey continuously tried to grab her hair. She wanted to mess with that ponytail. And Bianca Belair was like, nah, I don't want you messing with my ponytail. That thing is so long. I don't even know what happens. I wonder if she beats Montez for forward with it when he gets in trouble imagine montez just playing video games and bianca just comes and whips his ass that would be great and that just would be so funny but this match like i said was phenomenal and you know in the end bianca beller ended up using her ponytail and i don't know if she like wrapped it around her i don't know how exactly i didn't really see how it happened but she used her ponytail and ba bailey kind of got wrapped around it and she rolled she rolled up bailey and she pinned her for the one two three and still your smackdown women champion Bianca Belair and she did her thing and the EST is still your Smackdown Women's Champion I'm down I'm all about it you know I want to talk about for a minute I don't know who Bianca Belair is going to face now that Bayley has moved on maybe we'll see because the next pay-per-view the next WWE pay-per-view is Hell in the Cell. We know it usually is in October, and I don't know why it's in June now, but it looks like Money in the Bank got pushed back to July, which, you know, I'm not mad about, but I really hope that if they do do a SmackDown Championship match in Hell in the Cell, I hope it's this one, because I, Bailey was in it last year with Sasha, and I think Belair, I think it's time for Belair to get her butt in that Hell in the Cell, and let's see what they do, and I can't wait to see what happens in Hell in the Cell, and let's see what happens throughout the weeks, because maybe we see Bailey or Maybe we see a new opponent for the EST. We'll just have to see. But again, this match was really good. And so far, you know, while I'm watching this pay-per-view, I really enjoyed this pay-per-view. You know, everybody was hating. I was kind of worried about it. But once the matches started going and it kept me intrigued, it got me really good. It was like just a really good pay-per-view so far. And then we had the triple threat match for the WWE Championship. It was Lashley, the Almighty, versus Drew McIntyre, versus Braun Strowman, the big man, Braun. And I don't know what you did, Braun, but you look like you got in really good shape, man. You look like you've done good. I need to get on your diet or something because your boy Tino needs to lose some pounds, man. His stomach's getting a little too big. But this match, when Braun went airborne, that was just, he, he landed on both of those guys. And Braun's like, you know what? I can do Rey Mysterio things he was trying to pull a book out of Rey Mysterio he didn't do that big of a thing you know it was it wasn't like some crazy flip but hey Braun moved for a big guy and that was just you know what that was just oh these guys just beat the hell out of each other throughout the whole entire match and what about when Drew put Bobby Lashley through the LED lights oh my god that explosion was huge and I know Lashley has been through LED lights before but that one was a little that one that one kind of scared me because it was out of nowhere I wasn't expecting it I looked up I was looking at my phone I was on Twitter and all of a sudden this explosion happened and I'm like poof like, I don't know but it was really good and this triple threat this this match was my favorite of the night this match is a five out of five and you know I know I talked about the Rey Mysterio but that was just more a five out of five because that was sentimental in my opinion this was the best match of the night and that's just because I love triple threat matches and they added extreme rules so they you steal steps Braun did everything Strowman powerbomb Drew, Drew McIntyre through the announce table they just beat that out of each other and they destroyed the Thunderdome and it was awesome but in the end of the match Lashley ended up picking up the win and spearing Braun Strowman and he pinned him for the one two three and still your WWE champion the almighty Bobby Lashley you know, I'm not mad, and we'll talk about when I get into my Raw preview on who I think that Lashley is going to face at Hell in the Cell. But let's talk about the main event, and it was for the Universal Championship. It was Roman Reigns, the big dog 
versus Cesaro. Yes, I said that Cesaro. We talked about it in my pre-show. Cesaro has had an amazing opportunities. He's been through Money in the Bank, Zeb Coulter, Jack Swagger, all these things, and he finally got his moment, and this match was really, really good in my opinion. It was phenomenal. I am just so happy with this match, and Cesaro does his thing every single time. I am... I don't even know how these guys do this. And when Jimmy, you know, and I was happy that it was clean too because there was no interference from from Jimmy and Jay and nobody came out. And, you know, I'm just really down for this. And in this match of the main event of the evening, it was great. I'm just so happy with everything that they did. Cesaro did his entire match and Cesaro did and he praised it. I know I'm just rambling on. I'm sorry, you guys. My bad. But, you know, I'm just happy Cesaro got this opportunity. And I'm going to give this match a 4 out of 5. I definitely enjoyed it. And Cesaro showed that he is here to stay. And he's going to be in the main event picture. Hopefully for a little bit now. Because he proved in this match that he can stay with Roman Reigns. And it would be really good. So, even though Cesaro did not win. He ended up getting choked out by Roman Reigns. And he ended up getting he ended up losing. Because Roman Reigns used the guillotine. And he choked him out. I don't know anybody survives that but you know i'm not mad like i said cesaro put on a phenomenal show in this match and it was just really good and you know this this main event was really good and like i said the triple threat was really good and i don't know everybody could say what they want about the zombies but i really enjoyed this whole entire pay-per-view and you know at the end of the pay-per-view seth rollins came out after roman reigns was celebrating and you know i thought maybe seth rollins was gonna turn face I thought maybe he was going to join Roman Reigns as the tribal chief and shake his hand. Maybe we are going to see like a shield 3.0 with like some type of different characters. But no, Seth Rollins went after Cesaro again and Cesaro ended up getting beat up. And so Seth Rollins ended WrestleMania Backlash with his hands held high. Even though he wasn't even in the match, he just felt good because he beat up Cesaro. But this is something I want to think about because if they're ending this pay-per-view with Seth Rollins beating up Cesaro. What if we see Seth Rollins versus Cesaro and inside hell in a cell and the winner gets the face Roman Reigns at SummerSlam and then we see a tag team match between Cesaro and J Cesaro and Jimmy because Jimmy seems like he's not joining the Tribal Chief anytime soon and maybe it's Roman versus Seth but that is just something to keep in mind and remember your boy Tino said it on May 17th at noon that just remember that I said it first if it does come true but like I said, main event was awesome. All the matches I thought were really good. And now that we've got WrestleMania Backlash in the rearview mirror, I like I said earlier, the next pay-per-view is Hell in the Cell on June 20th on Peacock in the U.S. and and it's still the WWE Network in the UK. And let's just make sure. Yeah, June 20th. I just want to make sure I got that right. It's June 20th. Put it in your calendars, everybody. Peacock and the WWE Network. But let's get into a Raw preview. And let's go into what I think is going to happen tonight. And let's see who I think is going to face Rhea. Who will face Lashley next, the Almighty. Is Pretty Ricky going to get a U.S. title shot? What is going to happen? Are we going to see the tag team champions and Italian to me <coughs> excuse me natalia and tamina the new tag team women's champions what are we gonna see in my opinion let's start off first with raw with rhea ripley i want to get into rhea ripley first i think that rhea ripley should face us or not ask i'm sorry rhea ripley should face Shayna baszler Shayna baszler just lost the smackdown women's championship with uh, the Smack or yeah, the SmackDown Tag Team Women's Championship with Nia Jax, and you know it's time for her to move on to bigger and better things. So let's see Rhea Ripley versus Shayna Baszler inside Hell in the Cell, and even if it's not inside Hell in the Cell, let's just see that match because I'm down and I want to see it. But now for Lashley, I don't know who is really going to get an opportunity for Lashley. On my other show, I talked about maybe Adam Cole. Maybe they bring up somebody like that. I don't know. 
But I really hope we don't see Drew versus Lashley inside Alan LaSalle. And it's not that I don't want to see that again. But again, I just feel like like with the Miz and Damian Priest, that should end. All the rivalries now should end and they should start over. Because again, after WrestleMania, it's supposed to be a clean slate. So hopefully we see somebody new come up and face Ash Lashley. And I'm, I'm still going to stick with Adam Cole because that's just something different. And, you know, that would be a swerve that, you know, I would love because, you know, Adam Cole's been in NXT. And it's not that I don't want him to leave NXT. I just think if they could use him right, he could see succeed. I just worry that Vince McMahon would do his whatever he usually does and waste him. But if Triple H was able to get his hands on it, I think it would be a great opportunity. So let's see what happens tonight on Raw with Lashley. But that's what my pick is. Now with Pretty Rick, Ricochet, they put on a really good show on the pre-show. Him and Sheamus did. And, you know, like I said when I was talking about the match, I think that would be a great rivalry. And let's see Pretty Ricky get a, a real U.S. title opportunity. Or not, or let's, ha let's see him have a good run as the U.S. champion championship and let's see him maybe face Mufasa Ali because I also talked about that in my pre-show they put on am amazing matches on main event does anybody watch main event I don't I still don't even know what day it's on I guess it's on Thursdays but you know I would really like to see that there is so much stuff that's going to go down on Raw are we going to see RK Bro versus Omos and AJ Styles for the tag team champions I'm down to see Matt Riddle or Riddle I'm sorry Riddle and Randy Orton as the champions I'm down about that because I still think the only reason why AJ got the championship was always a grand slam but we'll just have to find out all these things on Raw I gave you all the results I let you know everything that went down I gave you my predictions for Raw I hope everybody enjoyed the show. It was really good. And like I said, for WrestleMania Backlash, it was better than what I thought. And I'll give the show a 7 out of 10. And, you know, it was good. It had some bad moments and some good. And, you know, I did as much as I could. And I gave all the good moments that I thought. So I hope everybody will smash that subscribe button. Remember to help your boy out. Go follow your boy at Tino Time 1996. Go check out my other YouTube channel. It's TNT Talk Wrestling Podcast. It's me and my me and my boy at Wrestling Empire 12 YT. So go check that out. Keep keep helping your boy out. And we're gonna do this. And until hell in the cell, this is your boy Tino signing out.